One of the other tools that we've incorporated into the workbench is a visualization tool using Google Earth, um, which allows you to visualize your information on a map. Um, essentially, it ports a KML file through to Google Earth and then allows you to visualize little points on a map, click on those points, and then get a balloon bubble which incorporates all of the data from the work set that you were working in and indicates all of the data for that particular point. So, really nice way of, of being able to share your data as opposed to sending an Excel spreadsheet to somebody. You can send them one of these um, and they can see all of your data on a map rather than seeing it in Excel spreadsheet format. So once you've got to the point of um, augmenting your data, manipulating the data, cleaning it all up and getting it ready to go, you then get involved with the upload process. Um, and essentially this little window will open up at the bottom and will allow you to then upload all of that information into your database. There's a secondary verification process where you can go through and check all of the data to make sure that it's gone through correctly. Um, over on the left hand side it gives you an indication of how many records have been created in which tables so that you can get a very good impression of exactly what this data looks like once it's going to be in your database. Once you are, are certain that everything is okay, there is then a commit button where you can commit that information to your database and get it into your database in, in one, um, one procedure. We do also have a standalone version of the workbench um, which functions off a USB key. Um, essentially as a field application so that you can take the workbench out into the field with you. Um, you can carry it around on a USB key, plug it into any machine, it'll, it'll run off the machine so that you can do data entry in the field um, and then bring that information back, attach any images that you've taken in the field, etc. Bring that information back and then upload it into your database. One of the other workflows that we are potentially looking at is the um, ability to use the new um, Wi-Fi enabled SD cards um, for a, a digital SLR camera which will wirelessly interface with a laptop or a, or a PC, um, in which case you would be able to take digital images of specimens and we would then automate the process of creating rows in the workbench and attaching those images to the individual rows so that you could then short circuit the whole process of taking images, for instance, of herbarium labels and attaching those herbarium label images to each row and then doing data entry from those herbarium labels. The three different mechanisms that we envisage you being able to do this is obviously doing manual data entry by entering the data by hand or using our scattergather reconcile engine which I'll talk a bit, a bit about a little later um, or using an OCR engine to be able to OCR the data from the label and then put it into specify that way. So this is one of the, one of the things that we are working on at the moment and hopefully this will be available fairly soon. Um, this is the mobile workbench. Um, obviously, as I said, it fits on a USB key. It's a separate download off of our website. Um, it has the full workbench capabilities built into it, uh, meaning that if you are Wi-Fi enabled um, while you're out in the field, you can do georeferencing, you can um, use Google Earth, etc., etc. It's fully compatible with the internal version, so you can export the data from the field version and bring it into your um, desktop version back at, back at home and you can then import the data into your, um, into your system. So getting into Specify itself, this is what the opening screen of Specify looks like. Once you've logged in, um, you will see a screen that looks some, something like this. And there are a number of components to the screen that I will go through. Um, the first one is the module um, list up at the top, which is essentially your view into Specify itself. The day-to-day -day tasks that you would do in your collection. Data entry, looking at your trees, creating a loan, creating a gift, whatever the case may be, querying your database, and you can see that the workbench is up there as well. So this is your sort of um, in, in, insight into the database and how you would actually functionally use it in, on a day-to-day -day basis. Then up in the right-hand corner, we have a simple search box, which is very much like a Google search, um, specifically there to be able to do very simplistic searches in your collection. You're searching for a collector's last name, or you're searching for a date, or you're searching for a tax on name and it will bring back all of the records associated with that particular tax on there. Um, down, the, down the other side is a left hand menu uh, which is associated with all the modules at the top and essentially that just gives you a look at all of the tables that you would be able to use for that particular module. So if you were in the data entry module you would be able to enter data into any one of those tables, not just collection objects but you could just go in and enter a whole bunch of agents or a whole bunch of taxa or whatever the case may be by selecting the individual table that you wanted to do data entry into. 
And then right down at the bottom, you have a tabbing um, infrastructure built into Specify that allows you to multitask within the database. So you can do multiple things at the same time. You can be entering a specimen and creating a loan and looking at a tree and working in the workbench all simultaneously and be able to flick dynamically between those tab tabs to be able to do um, multiple tasks at the same time within your database. So that's the general outlook of what's, what the opening screen of Specify looks like. So the simple search engine up at the top there um, allows you to do these very simplistic searches through your, through your collection, usually just a single term um, or multiple terms bounded by, um, by quotes or, or double quotes and allows you to bring back a whole bunch of results for that particular search. There are obviously a number of blue tables up at the top there, which is the primary table where it has found that piece of information. And then a whole bunch of related searches underneath that that relates that piece of information to other tables in the data model. The simple search is fully, fully um, customizable by you. You can decide which fields you want to search on, which fields you want to return in the result set. And then you can also order your, your um, related searches so that you can get, take best um, effect of the simple search and bring back all of the results that you're interested in seeing from that particular search. When you start getting to data entry, this is what uh, a simplistic form would look like in, in Specify. These forms are completely malleable by you. You can add fields, remove fields, move them around, change the captions, um, change the way different subtables of information are displayed um, for your particular collection, for your particular scenario. And so some of, the, some of the things that are available through a data entry form, you obviously have authority files for things like taxonomy and geography um, and all of those kinds of things. So going to the taxon um, uh, field and typing in the first letters of a particular taxon entry will bring you a pick list of all of the items that are contained in your taxonomic tree. You can then go through and you can select, that, select a particular name from the list or you can select add at the top to be able to add a new taxonomic entry. This is the taxon form, so you can go in and you can add all the information about that particular new taxonomy name that you are adding to your tree. The common names, the authors, all of that kind of information is there, including adding citations associated with that particular name down at the bottom. One of the other, um, one of the other fields that functions in much the same way is the collecting event field. Obviously all of your locality information associated with a particular um, specimen is contained in three separate tables. We have a collecting event, which is the people that collected the specimen and the date on which it was collected in its most simplistic form. We then also have a locality form that describes your locality and your latitude and longitude. And then a geography table, which is your continent, country, state and county. And so if you, again, type in the first couple of letters of a field number, which is what links a collecting event to a collection object, you will get a list of all of the, all of the available collecting events that are in the system that start with those particular letters. You can then go and select one of those and reuse it for multiple objects, or you can click Add at the top there to add a brand new collecting event. So if we go to the collecting event field, you can see um, the field number, the date on which it was collected, the method that was used to collect it, and then all of the collectors associated with that particular collecting event. You'll also notice that down at the bottom of all of the major tables, there is an attachment function that allows you to um, attach any objects to that particular table, be it a, a, an image of where the specimen was collected, or an image of the specimen itself, or a PDF of a publication, or a Word document, or an Excel spreadsheet. All of these kinds of things can be connected up to your database so that they are visible from within the database. So this is your collecting event information, then you can see that there's a locality associated with that collecting event. And if we go through to the locality form, you can see that it's a locality which is then associated with a geography and all of your latitude and longitude information. Um, all of the fields that are, that are part of the MANUS georeferencing protocols in terms of who georeferenced it, when it was georeferenced, it, why it was georeferenced, why it wasn't georeferenced. All of that kind of information is incorporated into our data model. We also do um, support section township range for US collections. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can see that there are two plugins built into the locality form to allow you to georeference this particular locality directly from here and also to display that particular point in Google Earth so that you can check that georeference and make sure that it's correct. So directly from this particular um, form, you can get back to that same georeferencing geore um, engine that I showed you earlier with all of the same functionality so that you can georeference that particular location directly from the locality form. 
You can also go through into Google Earth and you can get an idea of exactly where that particular location is so that you can check that georeference against the locality string and make sure that it's appearing in the right place on the planet. Um, every single collection object is also associated with a bunch of um, preparations. Obviously you have different preparations associated with the same uh, with the same collection object. In ichthyology we have things like wet specimens, cleared and stained specimens, skeletal specimens, tissues, etc. which are all just preparations of the same object. Um, and so there's a one-to-many relationship between that particular um, preparation and the collection object itself. Again, here's some of the fields that are in the preparation table. Obviously the type of preparation, whether it's on loan, who it was prepared by, when it was prepared, the number of specimens in that particular lot, which is what we work in, ich in ichthyology, and then exactly where that specimen is stored, which is another one of the trees in the system, um, is a storage tree, which is, which is what we're going to get to next. <coughs> 